Lovely, lovely. Cool, cool. All right. Welcome back, team. So today I want to talk about culture. Um, the reason why I want to talk about culture is because what I'm seeing at the moment with a lot of businesses is a very high churn rate in sales reps. Now, what a lot of our business owners typically do when the revenue goes down, they either, they either blame the ads or they blame the sales. But there's, there's, that, there's that thing that they need to take a step back and look at a more holistic approach. So typically bad results you know, will either come from a lack of training, um, a lack of will, confidence, drive to do something, or it will come from uh, a lack of a good culture. Um, you can put a great rep into a bad organization and they won't perform. And so let's talk about that. So like, Kelly, let's start with you. Like, what, have you, what do you see like culturally in Sniper that made you kind of resonate with us and, and feel like this is a good fit for you? Honestly, there's a lot of things that I can point out, but number one is the support and um, the fairness. Uh, yeah, that I got, um, that I get from the team that I'm currently in, the Econ Boss. Um, not only that, um, everyone is rooting for me to perform really well, especially when I'm like um, experiencing like bad days. They are like literally sharing me their stories when they experience um, bad days as well. So it puts me in a place that, oh, um, um, it's okay if I experience some bad days. Doesn't mean that I'm incompetent or like, um, like I'm worthless or whatnot, because from the previous clients that I'm currently working, I like from the previous clients that I work with, I managed to close them, close for them like $80,000 to $100,000 um, per month. And then when, when like there's a bad month um, that occurred, like for example, um, around March with, with this specific account that I work with, they put the blame on me because like they they try to tell me that, hey, you're dropping the ball. Hey, um, why you're not booking a lot of calls? Hey, why, why you're not closing a lot of leads and stuff like that. And it's just like literally um, just increase the emotional baggage that i'm carrying with because i already feel bad about myself for not booking a lot of calls like not hitting kpis and stuff like that and then like the sales manager and then the, the owner uh puts the blame on me even though in reality i'm only getting like average around 10 to 15 leads per day and all of like majority of them are from third world countries so i can only do so much with the, with that kind of like leads you know yeah. and they easily forget like the results that I produced for them consistently in the previous months, like 80K, 60K, 50K, closing the DMs, booking like 10 calls, eight calls per day. So yeah, when they when they get frustrated, they try to put the blame on me, you know? Yeah. And however, it's with, good, yeah. It's a good point you make though. And sorry to interrupt you there, but you know, you said it yourself, like if you have like a great month and then you go into, you know, one that's slightly off, clearly you can do the job. So we have to kind of look at other factors that are affecting the results that that particular time, rather than just blame someone. It's kind of take a step back. But more importantly, as a business owner, take the emotion out of it. If we take the emotion out of it and we can look at things from a data-driven perspective, then we can work out essentially what, what's happened. Um, and what about you, Colleen? Like, I know that, you know, you haven't been with Sniper a, a massive amount of time, but what's been your experience so far from like a culture perspective and fitting in with the team? Um, for a culture um, perspective, for a culture um, okay. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, first of all, uh, I can see that the sniper team really value the people around them or that works for them, the sales rep. And second, no one is blaming each other. Like, if something is, um, like slacking off or something is not working we take a look of all the factors and not just blaming each other and next is the growth of each members like we have this weekly um huddle and 
trainings to grow if you want to be uh, if you want to scale, scale up your skills and go to the next level. Also, if you want to be a phone closer, there's, um, there is a room for growth for, the, for that one. Yeah, and the huddle, it's, I like it when we share our stories like that because we get to know each other more. And wins, like we share. Uh, yeah. I like the community. Yeah, I think it's important to 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 love where you work, right? And to to be surrounded by people that you actually genuinely care about because that level of I suppose accountability to a degree kind of um it kind of makes you want to work harder um without any pressure from anyone else because no one likes to let anyone else down. Um it's like getting a personal trainer, you know, if you don't want to go to the gym, you don't want to let your personal trainer down, so you go anyway. So I kind of feel like the community we've created is, is, it's like what we say is team, team itself. And that's the order that we kind of put things in. Um, and I suppose like Erica, like you lead the DM set team. Like when you interview someone, what are you looking for? Yeah, it's, uh, it's interesting that you bring this up because that's a conversation that um, we have quite often. So I think the first thing to look at is um, like person's work ethic and values. And then secondary, it would be skill because if, a, if we're just hiring people based on skill, they can be the most amazing person when it comes to like appointment setting or closing or whatever it may be. But if they're late to meetings, if they're not a problem solver, if they're always complaining, if they're just not showing up as their best self and like really doing everything in their capacity to put their best on the table, then it becomes really hard working with people like that versus someone who might have less skill, but is just the most amazing person, does their best, shows up, always good attitude, putting everything that they can, working with their heart, like that's a whole different conversation because skill can be taught, like little things can be taught, but you can never teach an attitude and like the value of just showing up and doing your absolute best, even if shit hits the fan. All right. So those are kind of like the things that I look at as like at a core as a human being, do you fit with the culture, um, with the standards? And also, am I going to have fun working with you or is this going to be like pushing a boulder up the mountain? Because if it's pushing a boulder up the mountain, I don't want to do that. I have a bunch of other shit that I need to do. <laughs> yeah. But if it's actually fun working with you, you're just missing a few like key skill components, then like not an issue. We're a rep development company at the end of the day and reps come first um but yeah, essentially like um if, if you could just show up and do your absolute best and just be genuine open uh problem solver like speaking up um and just just doing your best like you have a place on this team that's for sure yeah yeah definitely and I, and I think it's it's important that you know when we look at culture and you you turn up for an interview it's really important to to realize what are my best attributes and what am i not good at and being transparent in that interview about them because otherwise when you involve yourself in a team your strengths and weaknesses show through and so typically that's why we interview on culture first because we know one thing to be true when times get hard and they typically do your character shows through first and foremost, um, that's backed up by your skill set. So times are hard. We want people to dig in, to get stuck in, and not just to kind of give up and quit um, because it's hard goddamn work <laughs> doing what we do, and it's never going to be sunshines and rainbows. And so there has to be a certain resilience that goes along with that. And so I think when if you are looking at becoming a, a DM setter or an SDR, whatever you'd like to become, you have to ask yourself one question. Is this something that I'm prepared to put the work in for? Is it something that I'm prepared to sacrifice a little bit for um, to achieve the overall outcome? Because it's very important to realize what makes you happy and what, what doesn't make you happy. You know, not a lot of people can work in this environment because it's virtual. And because of that, you know, you have to have a lot of self-discipline. You have to have a lot of focus. And it takes, you know, Kelly, you've said this before, it takes a certain mindset of an individual to be able to sit at a laptop and grind it out when there's no one else around you. Um, so there has to be a lot of self-drive, focus, and determination. Um, and you really have to be driven. 
And so these things, these are things that we typically look for because when the when the eyes aren't on you, it's very easy not to do the work. Um, and what we've typically seen in the past is if we've made a wrong hire, which we've done from time to time, um, when the pressure is off and no one's looking, the statistics go down because people realize that they can start to kind of cut corners and get away with some things. Um, and ultimately, when we come back and look at that person, we wonder why the numbers have gone off. Um, and so when you are looking an opportunity like this, you've got to realize that you have to be self-driven um, and you've got to want it as badly as you want to breathe because the rewards only come with hard work. I'd love to sit here and say it's super easy, but it's not. <laughs> you know, it just isn't. Working at McDonald's is easy. Um, you clock in, you clock out, and that's it. But the life that we live is very hard for the first few years while you acclimate to that position and then once you get used to it you build up your own processes and systems that's why like kelly and colleen you're able to get through hundreds upon hundreds of conversations every single day because now you have internal processes and systems but it takes time to learn that and so yes we can teach you the skill but you have to have that internal switch that can just go right i'm going to get it done you know and we have other people on the team like valeria for example who will do five, six, seven, eight hundred conversations a day. And that's a whole new world of experience to get to that kind of level. And so really what we're kind of discussing here is do you believe that you've got the right skill set, uh, sorry, the right mindset and the right personality to come into this career? Because one of the things I know about Kelly and Colleen, <laughs> they're very honest about what it takes. Um, but, you know, since you both come in, you've both shown a personality that resonates with who we are. And so that's why it feels like family when you come in, because that's the person you were anyway. So we haven't had to force that out of you. It's, it's been very natural to, to kind of see that transition into this organization. Um, and so I suppose like starting out, and uh, my own me and Erica have been doing this a long time, <laughs> but uh, a little bit longer than you guys. Um, but what would you say to anyone starting out or looking to start out in this career? What do you think that they need to do from a personal development perspective to kind of prepare themselves for what it takes? So we'll start with you, Colleen, first. That's an interesting question. An interesting question. Okay, so for personality development, I would uh, say that you start from what you can do or what you can control first. So you could read books, like set goals for yourself and be committed to do it. Like, for example, what I do before is set my goal to read five pages a day and I have to be committed at it because it's for my own sake, for my own development. And you could also start with um, your health as well. Because a good body sets a good mind. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that's it for me. Cool. Okay. Uh, there's, again, there's, there's a lot of things that I can say with that. But number one is um, prepare your mindset because everything is bottles down with the mindset. So um, if you want to, if you want to be a valuable point setter or like SDR, um, prepare yourself to the point that be in love with hard work because I'm in love with hard work because I already convinced myself that nothing like nothing good in life comes easy like everything that is beautiful in life um, breeds hard work like you need to put in the work you need to be okay with working hard putting in um, it doesn't matter if you have if you have like skill set first I remember Noel one of my mentees when he was coaching me as uh like he's like um trainee in boxing and he was keep like he keeps asking me questions like hey what do you do for like living like how much are you currently earning stuff like that and then i shared him like hey i'm earning six figures in philippines stuff like oh shit like really like like how do you do that okay i'm like if you're if you're interested i'm willing to help you but but like, I just asked him this question, like, 
are you willing to put in the work? Like, are you ambitious? Because if you're ambitious, you're willing to do everything that, uh, everything or like whatever it takes, by all means, at all costs, you will gonna do everything for you to learn all the skill set. Because skill set can be learned, man. Like, like last year, I'm just freaking homeless dude, like <laughs> undergrad, nothing. Like, I'm just a freaking driver, but I have this like intense motivation and belief in myself that I'm destined for something great for something great like I can achieve my own greatness I can earn like six figures like doesn't matter if I don't have any diploma if I'm not a college graduate doesn't matter because Manny Pacquiao from Philippines Jensen he became a freaking world boxing champion he became a freaking congressman to the point he became a senator almost president of the Philippines because he has this mindset and belief and like he is just a, like a savage hard worker so if you want to be sdr if you want to be successful be in love with hard work be fine with it embrace it um endure it because it will teach you a lot and it will literally change your life for the better that's it man and yeah. everything will just flow naturally and will come into place you know no, i agree it's going to take hard work um and you have to realize that coming in you know you see all this, a lot of marketing these days about five steps to this, six steps to that, two weeks to this, two weeks to that. But, you know, it takes time to get fit. Do you know what I mean? It's not going to happen like overnight. So um, don't buy into the BS in the marketing that's out there right now. Like, we'll be very honest with you and always transparent that it will take work. Um, you will have to go through some sacrifices. But on the other side of sacrifice, they're great rewards. Um, but if unfortunately, if you want to take the easy route, um, there's only one thing that you're going to get from that, which is burned, disappointed, and uh, ultimately regretful <laughs> in the end. Um, so there's that kind of moment of realization, to be honest with you. Um, and I think that what would you say, Erica? Yeah, I mean, typically within the first 30 days, we can typically tell whether someone's going to make it or not. Um, what would you say are the main reasons why people don't make it? Uh, the main reason why people don't make it is if they don't even try, <laughs> like really, because what we're looking at, like the management typically looks at the data behind someone's work, right? So it's like, if you're not able to book an appointment, but you're hitting your activity levels of like, you know, 120 messages or 400 outbound dials, like we can sort of reverse engineer what the issue might be, which is usually either skill or something outside of our control. Uh, now, if the person isn't even putting in the fucking work, then like what like what are we supposed to do here? Like uh, I can't, you know, go over to like Philippines or States or Europe and like smack you as you're not doing your work. Like <laughs> like what are we supposed to do here, right? But then another thing why people may not make it is if they're not asking for help. I feel like deep down inside us, we all have this like inner voice that's like, if something's going wrong, if you don't know what you're doing, you're like, oh, I'm not really sure what I'm doing. Like you have something in the back of your mind being like, I'm not too sure this is how it's supposed to be. And if you ignore that voice and just keep doing the same damn thing you've been doing and producing no results, well, again, like, what are we doing here? Right? So it's like, um, speaking up and asking for help but also putting in the work is probably the two biggest factors that we're looking at and if those factors aren't met so if you're not putting in the work and you're not asking for help and you're doing the same action producing the same results which is no results and you know in some cases it's called insanity if you're doing the same actions and hoping and praying that you're going to get a different result well again like listen to that inner voice that's telling you like something's off and then speak to the person who is either you know, in charge of you or who's overlooking the account and don't ever feel like, um, oh, you know, something's not working out. I'm just going to go and figure it out. Like if something's not working out, it's because your knowledge is limited to what well, you know, and it might not fit the actual process that needs to be in place just because you don't know, like you don't know what you don't know. Right. But until you ask for help and ask for someone to show you the steps or coach you or train you, you're not going to get anything, anything like different, any different outcomes. Yeah. And then, yeah, if you're not even putting in the work, if you're just sitting twiddling your thumbs all day, like, I mean, that again comes back to like character and work ethic and your values. Like, if you're okay with just sitting and twiddling your thumbs, 
man like good luck <laughs> I don't know like you're not you're not gonna be a good setter but you're also not just gonna be good in, in life period <laughs> like hello yeah, <laughs> for sure and, and I think that you you make you make some um some valid points there we typically we're very attuned to the fact that in a very very quick period of time we'll know whether someone's going to make it or not um and if someone's struggling and they ask for help you know we see something in you that we can we can go okay they're able to identify you know what's going on they're asking for help and they want to get better and that kind of mindset we can work with someone that just puts their head down and just carries on making mistakes without asking for help or understanding what they're doing is not going in the right direction um it's definitely not someone's gonna last you know so typically what we're looking for you know and if you're new you want to be looking at at it this way who can i learn from that's done what i want to do that is achieving the results that i want because they know what it takes you know rather than you trying to figure it out by yourself which is inherently why there are so many failures because you spend way too much time trying to do it and then motivation dissipates um it's like trying to lose weight if you haven't lost weight within the first week of an eating program you're probably not going to continue and it's the same thing with this like if you're not seeing results within the first couple of weeks couple of months very few people will continue through but there could have been a small tweak or something something very minor that you could have done differently which would have changed everything but you're limited by what you know and the experience that you have and that's why you have people like erica kelly colleen to help and support so that you understand how to do it right first time to mitigate the risk of getting it wrong so you can be successful. And if you turn up with the right mindset and you have the right guidance, you'll get there in no time. So in, in what I find to be true is this, like business owners buy time, employees waste time trying to become business owners. And the reason I say this is for, for one reason. If you know that you don't have the skills knowledge mindset to get the result then how are you going to figure it out it's 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 an impossible task because you don't know what you don't know burn the bridges get someone to teach and train and coach you and how to do it and you'll be there in no time whatsoever and watching everyone else around you just trying to figure it out and fail because literally one percent of people that start out actually make it um, and that's only because they had the, the, the mindset and the forethought that I don't know what I'm doing. So I'm going to go and get some help. And if you get some help, you'll get there. If you don't, you probably won't. And that's just how it works. All right, team. Cool. We put the world to rights. So if you are new and you are looking to earn the kind of money these guys are doing to have the lifestyle that they have, um, and I follow you on social media, so it's, it's a pretty good lifestyle, um, you you're going to have to get some help. You're going to have to get some support and get it right so that you can get there much quicker. So don't be afraid. Reach out to this team. Um, have a conversation with them. See if they they believe that you've got what it takes and learn from them. Any last closing remarks, team? No, I appreciate you, team. It was good connecting with you again. Yeah, awesome stuff. Yeah, Ellie, let's go. Yeah, let's go. Awesome stuff. All right, team. Well, it's been yeah. a pleasure as always. Let's go. <laughs> pleasure as always. I will uh, love you and leave you, and we'll see each other next week. Ciao. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Yeah. Bye.